Hello, MGB here from the NAM team and some sort of Corporation Forums. Today I'm going to start making a series of short video tutorials which cover the basic usage of the Network Add-on mod, naming this series at New Users. As such, I suppose I should start by explaining a little bit about what the Network Add-on mod actually is. In short, the NAM is a mod that allows for more transport networks than were originally in the base game of SimCity 4. If you do a lot of what you can see here, this is one of my test cities, is simply not possible without having the, the network add on mod installed. So I'll very quickly run you through just a couple of the things that you might see here. So, for example, here is a transport hub that's included, have an underpass going on here, that's another NAM feature. Simple roundabouts like this again, another NAM features. This is a fractionally angled road with some 90 MPS curves. See here is one of the network widening mod roads. And as you can see here, this street network, which is quite random and not in any way straight, much of that functionality again enabled by the, the NAM itself. Have the GLR network, which is basically trams, which runs through here. And this is the real highway, which allows you to build a modular highway system within the game. You can see an overpass here, There's a number of bridges, railway networks and everything all intersecting here within the city. And hopefully this will just give you a brief glimpse into some of the possibilities that the Network Adam mod will enable. So I figured a good place to start with this tutorial would be to explain two types of pieces that are included within the map. That's the puzzle pieces and the draggable or flexible pieces. Now, traditionally, the NAM development focused mainly on the puzzle pieces, and as we move forward into the future, the drag and flexible alternatives are becoming more, more common and hopefully will eventually replace the old puzzle pieces. Having understood how both of these networks are utilized in game, we find that the bulk of the NAM content then becomes quite intuitive to use, as they're all based on the same principles. That's the best way for me to show you now the difference between these two is to work with one of the networks where both pieces are currently available. Therefore, I will begin today with the overpasses for the road, one way road and avenue networks. These can be found in the road menu here. And there are five items which are the old puzzle pieces, and this one which is nested in the middle, which is their draggable alternative. So let's start by making a road overpass, and we'll do that with the 50 meter or level 2 elevated road viaducts. But before we do that, I'll just create something for it to actually pass over. So let me select the item from the menu, and then use the tab key on your keyboard to scroll through any of the available components of that puzzle piece. As you can see here, there's quite a number of options for interfacing with various different networks. What we want to do is create a piece over the road, which is this one here. As you can see, using the home and end keys now, I can reorient the piece if I wanted to have a diagonal overpass. That would also be possible if I had a diagonal road. Shown here, you can see the straight piece wouldn't actually work. This is designed for a dual diagonal road. There's a third piece here we go. And that would go into place thusly. However, for now, let's just keep it simple with the straight piece. So there's our road over road piece once more. And having put the main overpass in place, because these puzzle pieces are modular. We must now find the remaining pieces required to complete your viaduct. You can see here with the main straight piece, there's actually an option with or without the pylons, which gives you a little bit of additional flexibility for the visual side of things. Just on one side, we'll put a ramp transition. 
as you can see, it's now possible to connect that up to another road. So that's how you would build with the puzzle pieces. This is the draggable equivalent, and they're based on what's called a starter piece. So here in this menu, you see we have the level one, level two pieces for all three networks. And I'm just using the tab key to scroll through those. And then there are the ramps, again six for each type of network available. And then finally these two pieces at the end, the flexible on slopes, we'll go into what those do a little bit later. So for now let's take the level two starter piece. And all we have to do is click the starter piece into place like so. And uh, because this is a road, we will take then the road tool and just drag the road through the starter piece and we can go straight over and automatically creates the overpass for us. If we want to, with these trackable options, we can even switch to a diagonal road at this point. We can have a 90 degree bend, and all of this is possible by just drawing with the road tool as you normally would, as opposed to having to switch between and find multiple different pieces to make that functionality work. Another thing that you can do with the draggable networks that you're not able to do with the puzzle piece ones, say for example, this has already been built, and I decide now that I want to put a railway running underneath it as well. Actually I can't do it on that piece but that gives me a chance to show you something. So this is where the starter piece was laid and it's not possible to put a network straight under those. But you see once you've dragged out a few tiles it's actually possible to delete that starter piece. So now I want to put the rail network there. So you'll see that will actually work. Much the same principle we could add a street if we wanted to. And as you can see that it's actually a lot more flexible in terms of the fact that we don't have to rebuild everything. So if we look at these puzzle pieces here, if I wanted to replicate the same changes, I need to delete the necessary pieces, run the new network underneath, and so it's important to make sure that the network is there before you put the overpass in place. And then I would have to find the road over rail and load over street pieces here to actually change the overpass. So having done that, let's just finish this off by showing you the ramp pieces. So I'm using the shift and tab here because it's quicker sometimes to go backwards through the menu. And it's a level two load slope we require. I grab a nest up there and then I don't have enough space for it. Out. And as you can see, this can just be easily connected as so. Now, this is destabilized a little. You'll find if that happens, you have a bit of problems. Just clicking around will often fix the problem. If not, you can add an additional starter piece which will help stabilize everything. So, having got our basic overpasses into place, it's about time I showed you those on slope transitions that we mentioned earlier. Before I do though, yeah, I think it's important to point out a few facts about the height system within the network add-on mod. Essentially you have five basic heights. So these networks you can see here, these are all on the ground or level zero, i.e. not elevated. <coughs> the two overpasses that we've put in, these are both level two, which is at 15 meters elevated. There's an intermediate between those, which has been level 1 at 7.5, and there's also level 3 at 22.5, and level 4 at 30 meters. Now, it's important to note that not every network will support every height. However, what's also important to note is that the difference between heights must always be exact in order for transitions to take place and look right. So I'm going to give you a few tips as to how to make sure that your land is nice and level and flat for this to happen. 
So yeah, if we just very quickly stick a few bumps in here so I can make a good example. If I now go and find one of those on slope pieces from before, so the level two on slope would be the correct one for the interface at the end of this viaduct. When I place that down, it's expecting for there to be a 15 meter difference in height between here and here, but there isn't. And so what that means is, is that the piece is trying to compensate and therefore looks all wrong. Now we know that this area here at the edge of the overpass is exactly flat. So what I'm doing now is I'm just clicking using the rail tool, and these are called stubs, where you have an individual tile being clicked next to each other. And as you can see, as I do this, it's leveling out the terrain, taking away those bumps. Now I hear you say, it might be flat, but we need a 15 meter difference between these two, which is quite correct. And we can use a tool that comes with the NAM. And go to the road menu. Here are the hole digger and razor locks. Once selected, as usual, you can use tab and shift and tab to shift through the available heights. And you'll see that amongst the options will be all those levels that I mentioned previously. So we have a level 2 or 15 meter one. You just click once. And that will raise the ground. If we were trying to do the opposite, it would also be possible to lower the ground as such. And as you can see, using these stubs, if you click them, in this case on the 15 meter high elevated section, when I click next to them, the land around it levels to exactly the same height. Having put a series of stubs in place, any networks then drawn perpendicular to that will also take on the same height. So it makes it very easy and quick to create an embankment here so we can use these on slope transitions. So for the draggable network, we want a support here to touch the first tile to the left of the new embankment that we've made as such, and we click to place that. And one thing that's important to note, you can't drag through these transitions. Now there's some of them where it might let you, but if it does, don't do it because that will actually mess up how the piece looks in the game. So what we want to do is to drag away from it like so, and you see it automatically connects and changes to the right network. And the same on the other side, drag away from it into your viaduct and then we have a nice neat transition. And as I said, this is exactly 15 meters height difference between here and here. Now we'll do the same with the puzzle piece. Again, using shift and tab here, find the straight road on slope piece. And as you've noticed, the previous transition was one tile further, but the puzzle pieces need to be so that the transition piece is just hanging on the edge, the angled part of the embankment, and click to place like so. Just need to fill in that last gap. Now, one thing that you might find useful to know if I try and drag a road that's perpendicular to the embankment, that's not possible with this puzzle piece. Perfectly fine with the flexible alternatives. Now there is a way around it with the puzzle pieces, if I delete the previous one we made, go back and find this variant, the T on slope puzzle piece, you see it's now possible to have a perpendicular road. So you have to decide which of those two options you want when creating an on slope transition with the original puzzle pieces. If I only want this to be a T junction, I can delete the tile on the edge. I can even change my mind and just return it to a straight road once more. But it is necessary to select the special T piece if you want to have that functionality. One thing I will briefly touch on now 
is the use of the slope mod. Now these are not things that are included with the manual to include. Again, the slope mods are standard. But with this embankment here, if I start to clear away the unnecessary parts of it, obviously sometimes when you're making a on slope transition like this it will be because the area you're transitioning to is actually at a different height. But you can also use them to create rather than a standard ramp as we've done on the other side of the overpass, we can just run a ramp which is an earthy ramp, which is quite commonly used in the real world. It's uh, cheaper than creating actual ramps just to basically terraform the land through it. And you can see here this is not a very good looking ramp at all. But I happen to have a slope mod installed. And if I switch to one of the networks, which is my real highway, you can see it's possible to actually get a very nice, tidy looking slope there. I were to use the rail network, get an even shallower slope. You can see that takes more spaces to fit. And then you can just run the remainder of the road down there. So let's level this up a little bit at the bottom so I can make it look a little tidier. And it's important when you're doing this that you don't accidentally level this tile or this tile so one either side of the slope. And as you can see using the earthen slopes here with the slope mod is another way you can transition from your overpasses and height transitions. So I think we'll leave it here for part one. Before I finish though, I just quickly wish to remind you that the things that I've shown you here today, most of these principles can be applied to the other networks within the NAM. So please feel free to experiment with the draggable puzzle networks and height transitions for the other various NAM networks. In the next part of the series, amongst other things, I will show you how to use the NAM to make more realistic road and street networks, such as the ones you can see here. I hope you'll join me for part two. Goodbye.